Well, fuck. I don't think I could say fog, fog at the beginning of a video, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, so I need to start this video. I got a lot to do today. And I, I used the topping M50 sent to me by Epos for a while, like just put in a, a, a micro SD card. You plug it into it. It's Bluetooth in and out. Oh, it's cool. A little player for 200 bucks. Um, then I decided today was a day I'm going to review it. And so I whooped out the manual and I started playing with the manual and I started playing with the manual and I started playing with the manual. And all of a sudden, this video went from like, oh, it'll be a quick two second video about a little portable player, a little, little player that fits with a little stack. And it'll be fucking easy to holy shit overload. So I want to, I got, I, I, woke, I, I took a piece of paper. Well, and I wrote some things. First of all, video sponsored by Linsoul. Because Linsoul's like, hey, could you give us a shout out like every once in a while and you, you will pay for an ad spot. And I'm like, so you know what? Fuck yeah, Linsoul Audio. Now with the Wraiths, which are over there and they're not getting reviewed yet because uh, even though they're on pre-order, um, they're going to send me different pads because they're like, we want to try to tune it a little bit different with the pads. So I'm waiting for the pads that I can review the Wraith. So that's one of those exclusive things. Thy Audio makes amazing IMs and now the Thy Audio Wraith exists. In fact, Zia, make sure the sponsor link from uh, Linsoul goes directly to the Wraiths because I've got potential. I just want to see what they could tweak with that pad. Um, also, all your IEM needs. Basically, a one-stop shop for, for IEMs and very few headphones. This is interesting that they have them on here. I know they've been doing uh, it's like a couple Thigh Audio. The th this is the, what, the second Thigh Audio headphone? Yes. Anyway, they also have sales all the time. 13% off, 12% off, 20% off. The Triple Win Leia's, which makes them $20.79. I think I have those here. What else we got? Moondrop. Oh, there's another Dawn. So the Moondrop Dawn uh, 4.4 and 3.5 exist. That's crazy. What is this? Quolos. <gasps> it's got a screen. All right. Linsoul, thank you. Thank you for sponsoring this video. But I got to get back to what we're doing. So, so what we're doing is talking about the $10,000 live stream, which is coming up. So uh, you guys know I did the mega yard sale. Everything sold. There's a couple of things that had to move to the second place, so the delays in shipping. But now it's time to sit down with you, the audience. Here on YouTube, I'm going to stream on the main channel. I don't usually stream, so I'll probably announce it on Twitter or Instagram or in a comment in the community section. We're going to do a $10,000 uh, we're going to sit down and we're going to go through everything everyone recommended that I purchase for $10,000 and then we're going to spend $10,000. I may not actually buy it on the stream because that feels like a lot of credit card information is going to go in there, but we'll see. So keep an eye out for a $10,000 live stream. And I also want to make an announcement that it's nearing the end of August here and the Z12s, these, my IMs that I, I put together with a Hi-Fi Go and Let's Sure, um, a second revision is coming out because those sold out in three weeks. And they're like, do you want to do it again and I'm like can we change it up so at least so if you were one of the first people who bought it there was a limit of 500 for the first run and they were exclusively in the red and blue the new ones will be the gold edition and you'll see why when they're out and actually have a set here to look at but um I will actually link in the video description the chimera cable which is a modified version of that that has interchangeable heads because it's a chimera and it could combine and change. You get it? I named it. I got to name that. So if you like the, the Z12 cable and you want another set with interchangeable heads for balanced, that's available. Can we please, for the love of God, stop talking about promos and shit and get back to the topping M50? Because I didn't know. I didn't know the potential because can I can I just point something out? Maybe you haven't noticed it. Right, wallpaper is usually very specifically picked to, to, to fine tune. So small, but wearing like all this utility vest stuff. Small and DLNA, Bluetooth in and out, SPDIF in and out. Or I'm sorry, SPDIF out. II2S. That's why the musician Pegasus is down here. Out. Hibby Link Control. Card reader. External hard drive reading, USB on the back. And then this blue wire, see this blue USB? Yeah, that's feeding the Was7 Fireflies as a DAC. That's the only wire going from here to here and making the sound come out. So it's acting as a computer host for that. Absorb all that for a second, just breathe it on in. Because if we look at the back of this, we have to look at the back of it. 
which is going to be, make it slightly difficult. It's kind of interesting. There's no like analog output. There's your Bluetooth antenna, your II2S HDMI port, optical out, which I'm not using, SPDIF out, which I am using to this, uh, one USB cable to this. So this could be, represent every just USB DAC that you can get. Um, another one which you could use for an external hard drive. I actually don't have an external hard drive filled with music, so or I would demonstrate it. Then there's a USB-C port there that says USB audio. You'd plug that into a computer, and then this would become a bridge or and or a card reader for the card on the side so that you could add music to it directly. And then you get your power, which is USB powered, and I'm using... If you don't know this particular, uh, Topping makes a lot of different models. And this is an M50, which goes with the D50S and the A50S and the P50 linear power supply, which is the only one for you to have a sticker. But this whole shebang is being powered by the P50, which is a linear power supply, which, oh God, it's a heavy bastard. Gets plugged into the wall, and then you have two USB outs, one for this, one for the DAC, and then a direct line, 15 volt from this to this for the amp. And then I've got these little tiny world's best cables in it. And you can see I'm using this bright yellow fucker for coax digital from that. So this little stack's gonna sit right here. You could, I mean, you could do the the, the stack like there, there. You could have the, the thickest stack. This reminds me of myself in some way. The, the, the fucked up Oreo is what I would call that. Um, so, so basically, this little thing with the with the screen. Hold on, we gotta get to the we gotta get to another track that has actual like like art. Hold on, next track. Come on, give me something with. There you go. Look, there's literally cover art. There's cover art. It's somehow reading the cover art here too with the Hibby Link app. So that's Bluetooth out. It's connected to my phone via the Hibby Link app. And we see the Batman thing, and then it's got this little tiny thumb-sized screen showing everything. Uh uh. Uh, okay, so Was Seven Fireflies through USB to this. Now I'm gonna unplug that actually because I want this little stack to be the thing that I'm actually listening on with the Neumanns. I've got the Rode, the Rode uh, 100s, and I keep thinking it's now here. This was a speaker company that I've never reviewed before, and that's NHT. But this is the NTH 100. So it's now this here, 100. And those are some of my favorite headphones made by a mic company. And these are definitely some of my favorite headphones made by a mic company. And the unfortunate little twer uh, twerk, tweak, is you can't use the USB output and the fiber optic or coax digital output. So you have to unplug that. Then those will come on. And now we can use the II2S or the SPDIF, but you also have to go into the menu Oh, you have to go into the menu using the remote, which by the way, isn't the same as every other topic remote. They're usually RC-15As or RC-16Cs. Well, this is an RC-17A with different buttons. And I didn't get to that part in the manual to understand what the fuck they do. So we're gonna learn that all together because I was just overwhelmed by the amount of, like I was sitting here trying to get this review started for like an hour. But I just keep like, like, oh, I discovered a new feed. Just keep re I kept reading the manual and every other line was like, it can do that. It can do that. It can do that. I can browse all the music. Which means if I get a hard drive with five terabytes of music and I hook it to this and then I can use the Hibby Link app, which I just happen to have on my phone. And I'm like, I might as well try it if it's on my phone. And then it just connects and then I can control this. And then it's got DLNA, which means I can literally open up my FUBAR and it's an output device just because it's on the Wi-Fi network. So that's a Wi-Fi antenna and a Bluetooth antenna. This is all $200. And I actually, I had a discussion about shit. Shit audio, all right? Shit audio. Not to shit on shit audio. But where's this shit audio? I know this is like, a, this would be seven to $800. If shit made it, it would also be massive. So the fact that this exists for $206.10 right now on APOS blows my fucking mind because it's, I've never seen anything that has this sort of capability. Like literally, even I even have upstairs, I've got the, um, I have to review it. 
I've got the Shanling EM7, which I did the Shanling EM5, which was that big unit with the headphone outs and the DAC outs. And it was like, it, it could connect to Wi-Fi and it could load your title and everything. And this has more features than that. It doesn't have an actual plug. So it's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this to compare because this is $200 and that motherfucker, they upgraded to like $2,500. It's wild. In fact, is that on Linsole? That might be a Linsole thing. Maybe I'll link to that on Linsole as well because Linsole is sponsoring this video. I'm gonna keep drinking coffee out of my trash taste mug because the boys need to inspire me to keep going. Mm. These coffee reviews are, no one pays me enough for coffee reviews. Okay, so did we begin? I don't even remember if there was a start to this video. So I've got some speakers hooked up there. They're Abratex, Abram Tech, Abram Tech. They're like a $500 monitor set that they're like, hey, would you want to review our monitors? And like $500 is like vanity money. So yes, let me turn them on. They're not currently playing because you have to go into a setting to set the output to either be Spitif, which is what is running this right now to my head and sounding amazing, or II2S using the remote. And so, all right, how do I, I, my brain, my fucking brain. Okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm stopping the video for a second. I'm switching the camera to narrow mode so I could zoom in because you, I can't film this. It's too small and I want to walk you through at least that. I've already given you the rear tour. The front, by the way, the front tour is power button, infrared receiver uh, holes, Last track, next track are up and down. So next track, last track, return, enter, and play pause. And this play pause and this play pause happen in every menu. And it's kind of annoying because you kind of want to go up and up and down in a menu and then over. But you have to go up and down, then enter it. And if you want to hit enter, it's never the right one. That's always play pause. I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. All right, let me switch the camera mode. All right, now we're in narrow mode. Now you can sort of get perspective on things like how small this stack is and how cute the waifus are. If I filmed like this, you would all fucking die. But I can definitely handhold it and my audio probably sounds a little strange. So yeah, no, that's a, that's a tiny, this thing is tiny. Tiny, 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 tiny. Can I, was it focus on this? It hardly focuses. All right, so let's take the remote. And we're going to hit the back button here. We're going to go back, 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 back. This is the main, I can go back and go all the way through. So here's the main settings. You got music browser, music list, net settings, play settings, system settings, and about. So music browser is what you think. Music list is what you think. You go in there, you can have, tell, don't tell it to scan music. It's rather slow off the SD card. It took me like 15 minutes to scan 20,000 tracks. Open all, which will let me access it. You can try to scroll down the list. It will eventually go faster and faster, but literally, unless you have a crazy file layout, you're not gonna be able to use it. I highly, highly recommend using the Hibby Link app on your Android device or Apple device, and it should work much better. So let's hit back again, we we'll got out of this. Uh, net settings is your Bluetooth or Wi-Fi settings. Obviously I had to set up my Wi-Fi and I think when I put my Wi-Fi password in, it was the most hysterical thing ever because the keyboard showed up here, 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 where I, my, my thumb can destroy the entire screen as far as the size of it. So <laughs> be overjoyed when you have to do that. But Bluetooth settings are on. You can change the name. Hibby link has to be on. You can change the quality. I think this will do LDAC sending i'm not sure if it'll do sending and receiving but it will it has ldac shown and then your bluetooth scanning and it'll find all your devices so let's get out of this your play settings are shuffle you could change your output mode to uh d2p for dsd um, and here's where you could change spitif over to ii2s or iis and then you could hear that the speakers have clicked on let's change tracks on that So now, how do I mute this? I guess I changed the input on that. So now it's not going fiber opt or fiber opt or coax lot, it's using the IA2S, which is a super rare fucking option to begin with. So now it's on this little tiny $200 unit, going to this musician Pegasus, and I have this feeding just that, and I'm sure I could feed this to something much more expensive, but I didn't bother. Because I've got too much shit on my mind as it is. So if I change it to IA2S, and then we change this back to the input. That is playing our music. 
good good song all right so let's change that now back again so here's the operation it would be enter then up then enter and then we're out of it so you actually got an eq on this and one of my complaints is if you can see which again i can't get it to focus but when i'm switching between things on the right there's a little there's a little like scroll bar but the actual highlight over the thing is sort of like dark blue on black and it's very hard to see that i mean i know i'm covered in lights here but it's kind of hard to see what's selected at the time so if you go to eq it's that times a million like i i gotta watch for the reflections to even display it and then i could switch between let's see i'm playing and pausing hit the right button uh we uh, there's custom there's oh, it's hard to read heavy metal blues vocal and it's changing the shape but you can barely barely see what the hell it's actually doing it's just, it's a literally impossible so I, I wouldn't even try to adjust the eq on this you can i don't know if the hippy link will does this have an eq that i can fuck with here's how i would scan for any of the tracks i want to play on there do that i don't know if i get access to that on here but it would be nice if i could i don't know if the hippie link goes that far um return return i did play the music i wanted so net settings was that we did net settings play settings was okay output mode is now back to spitif for this also it needs to be in spitif mode for the usb host to work so when this is plugged in if you want to use a usb dac you need to be in spitif mode um EQ is hilarious. Resume mode, you have choices of location, track, or off. So I have location, so I stop a song 30 seconds in and come back, turn it back on. It'll continue from that 30 second location. Return. Um, gapless playback mode is on. Then you can change your II2S phase. Although I said fuzzy, there's two E's in it, because that's adorable. And then your DSDR data II2S settings and your DSD flag settings, which just happen to be set perfectly for the musician Pegasus. And now we go to system settings, English, backlight is on maximum. I thought that would help with the uh, contrast between the selected thing and it does not. Backlight timer I have set to never because that screen is too cool to ever have a turn off. You would obviously do that if you did that. Your USB modes, you have either USB or DAC. When it's in USB mode and this is hooked up to a computer, it becomes the card reader. When you have it in DAC mode, it becomes an audio device that'll then bridge out to other things. So that if you have your computer hooked up to this, it'll read the card and and or it will use whatever DAC you have hooked up to it with a spit of ri 2 s out. That's that's ridiculous. Here's your firmware update, which requires you to put it on the SD card. I thought it would use it over Wi-Fi since Wi-Fi is enabled, but it does not seem to want to do that. It does not have cloud updating, restore factory, etc. And then the about is just the about showing me firmware versions and things like that. Currently, firmware version is 1.0. I really should look for a new firmware version. I love how it bounces everything back and forth to try to fit it in the screen. That's kind of cool looking. Looks like it's crunching numbers. So return, return, back to what it's playing, next track, which again, I have to get used to hitting down for next track. Let me get out of this camera view and, and into back into ultra-wide stupid view. All right. All right, now that we're back to stupid view, um, I could actually turn this off because tubes and electrical. Um, I can't tell you how this sounds. Cause that's the thing. That's one of the things about Z reviews is like, oh, how does it sound? I hate when people tell me, oh, Z, you didn't describe how it sounds. And I try to with like emotion and not with like the words that other people say about sound because fuck those other people. I've started this channel because I don't like other reviewers. I want to be nothing like them. If every other viewer in the world is great, then I want to be shit. I want you to feel it. I don't want you to like write down, oh, well, he said the sibilance. So it's great that I have a unit here that I don't have to describe sound because everyone can go fuck themselves and I could just talk about the wild features because this is a feature whore. This thing comes out of the box and you do, it's, it's, it's the most unsuspecting by the Grove made stand if you want a wooden pressed really nice thing. This thing comes out of the box and I didn't expect much and I was kind of upset it didn't have just like RSA outs. If I had just RSA outs, it'd be like, all right, you buy it, it's cheap, it's Bluetooth, you hook up to it, maybe it plays off an SD card, la 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 la, it's got a little remote, cute. 
This is so much more than that. This could literally run everything you want. You don't need anything else. This will act as a rune endpoint because it's got UPnP. You can run your rune and then send it to this. And then this can send to an II2S fucking DAC that then sends out to speakers or headphone amps or any. And then you can control it. This is what I wanted. The hippie controller is perfect because it gives me the full list of all the things. Here, play cue. Let's put this on. Oh, Monica, which will, that'll, that'll fuck me up. So that's playing right now, which means if I turn this up, it's playing right now. This is the stupidest device. This is probably the most stuff in a device since the EM5. It lacks a headphone out and it lacks analog output. It's got no analog outputs at all. It's all digital. But if you're truly an audiophile, you're not going to use the analog outputs on a $200 thing anyway. It's convenient, but the hardcore fuckers, me included, if you can give me II2S out and USB host capability and USB host capability from a computer and UPnP fucking DLNA Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in and out, like you could set this up with your music card in it. It runs off USB. Get this. Follow this. If I'd gone to a tailgating event and I didn't want to use my phone to play everything because my phone will die real fast, I'll get a fucking USB battery pack linked in the description. I'll plug a, an SD card, a micro SD card into this with 25,000 songs, right? Right, follow me, follow me. I'll set it on Bluetooth outputting. I've got a whomping big Bluetooth speaker and I'll hit play. And this thing, I ran this thing in my kitchen on the, on the little tiny one, the little ones I use my live stream on. It ran for like 10 hours and it barely used the battery. It doesn't even get warm. You could just be, this could be a portable USB host and just sit there and just shuffle music. And then you'd even get a remote and you could sit out there and just boot this or hit next track. It'll deal DLNA. You could DLNA to an I2S DAC on your tailgate party if you had a Bluetooth or a USB powered uh, DLNA Bluetooth I2S DAC, which doesn't happen, but it could. Just saying could. And the fact that it's like, here's the thing, I got to take out the stack. I don't recommend the stack enough because there's other better things or bigger things. The new SMSL 6 series, SU6, SH6, little tiny fuckers, but not this tiny. And they do a great job. Maybe even some things better than these. But like, look, look at this. If we ignore the mega power brick, which is a separate thing, but I won't because it's here with a sticker on it. Like this is the whole point of this, this is a linear power supply for the amp and for whatever USB device you plug in there. This is what I pull out when I need to test a USB powered device, regardless of the brand, because it's like, this is obviously the best USB power brick. I was gonna use this like little IQ anchor one, but if you have this, why wouldn't you? So ignoring this though, you can get this DAC, which has a little little nipple knob to adjust volume, which isn't actually affecting it at the current moment. Oh, I switched to Bluetooth, which also has Bluetooth, by the way. Actually, it is affecting it because I'm running this into this and powering with this. Okay, so yeah, so I could run this zero volume. And then you have this with a balanced output, which I don't know if this is truly a balanced amp, the A50S with high and low gain settings which has pre-outs, so they could use it as a pre-out. Like this is the smallest, best, this is the best smallest stack and it's built like a fuck, like you could kill someone with this. I almost destroyed that. Um, all of these are machined aluminum. It's like, I want to use this stack more and thankfully this exists so I can actually do so. Next track, hold on. Can I not control? I can go back. Why can't I go forward? Oh, there it goes. I was wasn't pushing the button right because the buttons are a little like you don't even see the controls in the front of this because the buttons are all black on black and they're sort of flat. But you can do most operations. Let's go back to the remote for a second because I really need to figure out what the fuck these custom buttons do. Are they invalid? I'm taking the remote. I'm taking it back up. Okay. 
Uh, standby previous back next. Invalid button, 4-5. C1 is invalid. What's 411? Invalid. So these two are completely invalid. Then there's EQ button, which is 4-6, which is equalization setup. So that jumps you straight to the EQ setting. And then you hit return. So which you I, you can use. You can absolutely EQ with it. It's just going to be like get a magnifying glass and a completely dark room, and maybe you could do it. Um, 412 is menu is playback menu, which I can't get to. I got to hit back. So yeah, you have the my favorites, add to playlist, shuffle and delete. If you want to, and it's down is around, and it'll constantly go around. So that's a thing. And then brightness is 413, and then 47 is invalid button. So anything that's C, these three buttons are invalid. Even though this unit has so many fucking options, I wish I could, maybe a firmware update will fix that. Because the topping A90D taught me that the firmware update can actually make these buttons that don't do something, do something. And the manual won't tell you it does something because they added it. So now I gotta do some research. Because if I can do switch between SPDIF and I2S, That'd be amazing, because then this would come on or that would come on. And then the other option I'd probably want these custom things to do. I don't know. Can I actually dim the screen to the point where it's off? One, two, three. And it goes real dim. Look, there's Ruby Rose from the Ruby soundtrack is on here, apparently. And it's too dark to see, so let's brighten that up. Look at that. I, I'm just befuddled. I'm befuddled and humbled by the amount of features in this. How does it sound, Zios? I don't fucking know. How does your DAC that's on the other end of this or DLNAing to thing, like I could literally hook this up to the Bucart A700 hub, which is DLNA. I think I could make the two PP touch. I think I can. I know that the, the hub shows up in my FUBAR. My FUBAR, by the way, has a hard time sending data to this. Other things that are more on spec for DLNA will work, like Rune or like any sort of devices. But my, my FUBAR setup, specifically on this computer, is just like, eh? um, But yeah, this is the dumbest fucking unit. It's dumb. It's dumb in the best way possible. And I want to do that thing where I actually bring it to a tailgate and just set it up. Yeah, hold on. I got like a couple tracks. I'll just put it on shuffle. And then just it's just weird shit playing all the time. So thank you, Apos, for sending this out and ruining like four hours of my life while I try to figure out how to make things go. The USB USB outputs and takes a fucking hard drive in and can go to your computer to be a bridge to become not a DAC because it well it actually could be a DAC because it has the fiber optic out. Then you could hook it up to other DACs that do DAC. No, it's not a DAC. It can't be a DAC because it's a, the DAC would be a digital to analog and there's no analog conversion, so it's only a digital to digital hub. I got a long day and I'm gonna drink a lot more coffee. I'm done with this. Thank you, Apos. Thank you, Linsel, for sponsoring this video. Linsel doesn't carry topping, but they carry a lot of other brands. Check them out. Check them out for the things you plug into these things. Actually, what do they have? They'll plug directly into this. I know they sell some DACs and things like that. Um, wallpaper available in the wallpaper hoard. If you copy a little code into an imager link, then you'll figure it out. Um, Patreon subscribe star. Support these videos and my mad and my make coffee. I want to buy more better coffee, so please support these videos. Because maybe I'll just be doing these topless and sweating with like a heat lamp and a fan, just so I can really get that thing going. So yeah, if you support me on Patreon or subscribe star, you get to see these reviews early. Um, I'm way behind right at this moment. In fact, that's why I got to do so many videos today. And I kind of wish it wasn't starting with this one because this just took so goddamn long. But um, usually usually you get about 10 to 12 days of like oh i can see this video before anyone else and 10 to 12 days of oh this product went on sale i bought it because i'm a patron and then when it comes out live everyone's like well fuck see us the price is wrong and i'm like no it wasn't when i recorded it was correct when the patrons had it it was correct you got it late not a patron um so yeah patron subscribe star see reviews early participate in yard sales like the mega yard sale would this is one of those items that i probably won't put in a yard sale if Apos is like, hey, just hold on to it, because I'm going to pull this fucking thing out just for convenience sake. The fact that the Hibby app works with it, and I could just change things remotely, and I guess that wouldn't work in the tailgate because it's got to be, oh, that's Bluetooth. It's only connected via Bluetooth with that. So that would work at the tailgate. 
oh my god it's gonna be amazing time to go figure out a concert to go to actually i am going to a concert mark Ribier. i won't tell you if it's new york or pa or because they're they're very similar distance but mark Ribier is gonna be fucking amazing um five dollars a month Support me on yard sales. Yard sales, yeah, this won't be sold, but everything else, I sell other things. In fact, this five terabyte hard drive, um, I'll fill it up with all my old reviews and sound demos and things like that and sell that to you because I own that content. So I could fill this up and sell it to you like that. So check for that in the yard sale, maybe. I don't know yet. I did that a couple times and it's only maybe like 130 bucks, which is not bad, but it's like, I'm pretty sure a five terabyte external hard drive is worth about that. And I feel like my content in raw, uncompressed format is probably worth a little more than that. I could share dick pics in it. Can I sell dick pics in a hard drive? I feel like there's a terms of service somewhere that's going to say no. Um, so you also get loss of sound demos and possibly all sound demos because YouTube's being a pile of shit. Hi, YouTube. You're a pile of shit. And they just, they don't like when music is played and pretty soon they're gonna do visuals. So if they see something that's copyrighted from a visual aspect, they're gonna start copyright claiming the visual aspects of your YouTube videos. Can't wait for that. 2022, baby. Gotta be great. Um, so yeah, uh, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, hear loss of sound demos, possibly all sound demos. And for $10 a month, which is the thing I should say at the beginning of this video, because that place is uh, quoted as the best audio resource on the planet. Um, you get into a private behind the scenes telegram chat where those people know exactly what I'm setting up, or exactly what I'm playing with, the day it's happening, when I get it, when I unbox it, like they're the they're the people I go to and ask, hey, what should I review today? Hey, oh, you need help with this? Hey, Zios, I, at Zios, Pantera, I have this and this. And then I help you and everyone else helps you and it's great. You also, if you're in that chat, which gets recycled every three months. Um, so make sure you're a current patron. But if you're in that, you also get into a lifetime swap meet channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear that I never kick you out of with other members who are in that $10 chat or higher. You could, you could support me for $50 a month if you really felt like it. And you would still be in that chat and you wouldn't have any more of... Uh, actually, I think you could PM me at a certain amount. I made it so that you could actually private message me. Although you could private message me if you're in that chat if it's a personal question like, hey my dick only works when this, and I'll be like, all right, I understand. I have the exact same problem. Klipsch, heresies. That's the answer. It's usually the answer to all your problems. Anyway, wallpaper, this, that, Linsol sponsorship. Keep an eye out for the live stream that's coming, the big $10,000. Link to the Chimera cable. Look out for the new Z12 Gold Editions, and I will see you all in another two days, unless I change my scheduling, which I can't, because I got so much to do if I ever change it to a longer release schedule. All the stuff would be invalidated in about two months. So I'll see you then and uh, peace out.